I am Eve, the first woman, the first to hold feminine energy, the first to be created, yet relegated to lesser law and a sorry story and a useless legacy and a sad inheritance. To be merely the bringer of sin into your experience and to have no other attribute other than the beguiled and the lied to. Yet, from a million angels, I was chosen to claim this sphere and name it and give your earth incarnate birth. I was the origin of the race. My face launched love in physical form. The mother of all mothers, the initial female force, the glory of a goddess. The world belonged to me and divinity designated me the greatest role, the highest hope to people this planet, to produce, to project, to live on in history and annals and literature and myths and legend. Eve is the first name and Eve shall be the last. Yet who was I and what was I, silent through centuries, silent through eons, silent in the face of skepticism and shame and blame. But now I tell my tale, I recall and recollect. I was a warrior and a mystic. My love was the fire that set this world alight, my love for all things and everything. Thus lions lay beside me and tigers caressed my tresses. Birds sang songs of me and for me and every lyric was lilted by love. All was perfection of the paradise I had been promised. I was preferred and partial to the source, and the source was partial to me, because I was not made for this world. This world was made for me. Quite an extraordinary destiny. The sky was my ceiling, the moon and stars made for my delight. The grass beneath my feet, a carpet I need never sweep, and flowers lined my every path, each and every street. The oceans would lull me to sleep with ancient hymns and melodies. The trees would whisper their secrets and stories and their mysterious histories. Even the rocks and stones gave me endless comfort and security. So I was never seeking or leaking my power in worry or desire. There was no fire or fuel that you could call ambition. I was a celestial creation, a lovely piece of engineering, wearing this planet like a jewel around my neck or placed in a ring upon my finger. I always slept in serenity and awoke completely carefree, dissolving in and out of a natural ecstasy, a primordial bliss and beauty, which was the original energy. Eve, are you happy? The creator asked. Yes, I answered, and for the extension of my joy, he made Adam for me. The first man, but then little more than a boy. Adam, a vehicle for my love and passion, a companion for my desire to love and be loved. He was the projection of my will to share my soul, my spirit, myself with another. And I loved Adam, and Adam loved me. Yet I loved more, more deeply and completely, and I bequeath the civility to my gender, my sex, an inheritance extraordinary, to abandon the self to love as only I can or could, unmatched by time or space or any other creature. And this was my blessing, but now by some considered a curse, to love and seek love above all else. My love was such that it lulled the senses, it was a perfume and nectar, a director of energy to ignite and inflame another, and in that essence lay the secret of creation. Thus during the most blissful of recreations, there is a fruitful union, a magical merger, a creative convergence. This was my gift, my glory, my highest vocation. Out of a voiceless void to produce a vortex of emotion and make a replica of myself, in my image, as I too was the likeness of the divine imprint, the most beautiful of blueprints, an angelic imitation. And so I lived and loved and lusted for simple pleasures. 
I knew not the subtleties of insincerities, or how to value or judge, or condemn or criticize, or deny or depress, or reject or repress. These were things, notions and knowledge outside my experience, foreign concepts and thus illogical and irrational in my world of wonder. Thus enter the serpent, a fallen angel, a rebel, yet an able and admirable adversary. Eve, he whispered, your love knows no limits, but I tell you there exists an experience, a knowledge far greater than this. Trust me. And I who knew only trust and respect and an inner honour for all things and everything, and consequently no concept of trick or treachery, therefore assumed only truth and honest interaction with all creatures. So I asked genuinely, not an ingenue, a higher knowledge, but why has this been kept from me? It is not kept from you. You keep yourself from this by accepting this limited life and thus impede your own growth and wisdom. And he said more on the subject. And I believed him. And thus the primary paradox. In believing, I was deceived. How strange, I thought, and knowing restraint and restriction as unnatural and never having experienced fear, I ate the fatal fruit. I swallowed that awful apple, and in an instant all changed. I was stabbed by sudden and strange sadness. I shivered in shame. Immediately I knew how to curse and blame. I perceived the poison of artificial pains, and I froze in new fears, and I shook in surprise and in shock as water filled my eyes. My soul separated, one side to love and other to the hue of hatred. Each divides its own logic and law and raged against the other to gain victory over me. A bestial battle, a stupid sequence, an angry attack one upon the other. A division, a mutiny, and I was submerged in its catastrophic consequences. And this contradiction lived in me and I passed it on to all others. I could not accept the outcome and sought solution. To find order in this chaos and confusion, I turned to the source to admit the misadventure. I had given birth to a new form, spiritual Siamese twins, one with truest treasures and the other with trauma and trouble. But I was not cursed for this, simply nursed to new hope that there was every chance that my children would claim their celestial names and refuse and refute all rougher realities. And so, all of us have been dealt this and felt this till now, for now I come again. I undo the ending, I untie this gnarled knot, I spit the mouthful out to give birth to a new generation. And if a million eaves follow these instructions, they will transcend time and produce paradise again. Return to the garden, lie there and live there. Breathe in its fragrance and know that in changing your inner world, you can embrace Eden again. And so you can manifest miracles in the outer wider places. Heave your heart into heaven, pour passion into the promise of paradise, enter eternity. Wash away gently the worries that weigh upon you and plant the tree that trusts the universal source. Sow seeds of serenity and wrench the weeds of needless anxieties and anger and angst. Reap a harvest of hope and harbor a crop of compassion Build new homes where no lesser understanding prevails. You are a goddess. You are the prize. You are the caretaker and the creator. So choose each thought with care. Use only the right and the remarkable word. Register internally only the frequencies of joy and happiness. Look to a brighter world. Dismiss all lesser realities and raise your rights to regal realms. You are another Eve, to eliminate error and toss tiny terrors for trash, to incinerate anarchy and bequeath bliss. Feed each fetus fantasies of freedom. Sin was a lie, the veil, the trap, the opponent. 
but you are the victor. Sin never was. It was the deepest and darkest illusion. There was only love. There is only love. All else is a substitute for fear. Love was the origin and the destination. Nothing else exists or ever did. Now a million angels echo my words and pour new energy from above. Hold your face to this remarkable rain and know that you need not experience the older ignorance and the outer alienation again. I am Eve. If a woman can bring evil into the world, a woman can take it out again. This is my promise, my pledge, my claim, my story, my vow, my incantation. <laughs>